Morning guys and welcome back to Ultimate Exotics. So we have a crazy week ahead of us. We've just finished up at the Spring Reptile Expo in Johannesburg and now we're getting ready to leave to go to Germany. Why we're going to Germany is that the Ham Reptile Expo is on and what that is, it is one of the largest international reptile expos uh, in the world and uh, what it is, it's people from all around the world gathering to the central point in order to share their um, this hobby of or the rep, the reptile hobby, and that is the breeding of reptiles with, uh, from geckos to lizards. Um, there's a lot of incredible amphibians over there which we don't have here, um, but the the amount of animals and uh, that you see there, it's really just amazing. All these guys that have uh, been breeding and working with these species which we don't normally see, so it's really exciting, and we're going to take you along the journey with us. I don't think I'll be able to do too much filming. Um, inside uh, the expo. Um, I don't think they allow cameras, but um, we'll take you along and hopefully show you some cool reptiles and yeah, take you along the journey with us. So I hope you enjoy. And for those of you wondering about those tubs um, that are open, don't worry, those snakes haven't escaped. Um, those are the males we've taken out there to put with females for mating. And uh, we just leave the tubs open so we know that that male is currently with a female and that we've got to put him back. So those haven't escaped. All right, so yeah, we're just gonna head out, head off to the airport now, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the journey. concentration going wrong, on here. Yeah? Wrong side of the car and wrong side of the road. <laughs> so in uh, South Africa we drive on the left hand side and in Europe it's on the right hand side so it takes a, a while to get used to it so I'm just trying not to kill us here. <laughs> but so far all good. But Wish me yeah, luck. Yeah yeah hopefully hopefully we get to our accommodation in one piece we're on the way there now. Um, it's about an hour drive and yeah then we've got a good couple of days ahead of us so we're looking forward to it. Okay, morning guys. We are awake and we have recovered somewhat. Got some good sleep last night and we're on our way to our friend Rolf Timmers' place to check out some of his cool animals and also pack all of our animals for ham tomorrow. Yeah, so the confusing thing is that we got three Rolfs today. So it's myself, Rolfie and then Rolf Timmers. So that's going to be a bit of confusion. Um, but yeah, we're excited to go see some of his cool animals, which we'll show you some of his snakes. Uh, he does a lot of, uh, he specializes in venomous reptiles. Um, so we'll show you some of those um, animals. And yeah, I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting. He's got some very cool things. So yeah, let's go check them out.
Good morning guys, it is quarter past seven and we have been driving now for about okay. three hours. <laughs> Good morning everyone, it is now quarter past seven, we've been on the road for just over two hours. Um, it's just getting light and we are on our way to Ham. There's been a big build up to this and we're really really excited. Yeah, so it's been quite a long drive so we're almost there, we're getting close um, and we're just really looking forward and excited to see the animals that are going to be there and all the different reptiles that are there and hopefully we can show you um, guys some of it. I know they're quite strict with the uh, filming rules there um, but we'll do our best to try and give you an idea of how the show is and yeah, hopefully it's going to be awesome so let's go see how it is. Expo was a crazy experience um, just unfortunately we didn't get to do as much filming as we'd like to we actually barely got any footage at all we did start filming and then they did ask us politely to stop filming and we didn't want to step on anyone's toes so um, we just thought you know it's better not uh, it's better that we just don't do any filming and instead we'll just share with you the experience that we had but we've seen a lot of other cool reptiles which we filmed um, so, so at least there are some nice reptiles to look at in this video. But yeah, the crazy thing about ham is the scale that it, that it is. So at home, our expo is, what are we, about 30 vendors? 30 vendors and over here, in excess, I think of 500 vendors. So over 500 vendors. So that can just put into perspective how big this actually is. And it's not just um, German reptile breeders, it's breeders from all over the world. Yeah. yeah. A lot of other European countries because they can easily drive to ham. Um, so it's people from all over the world that are passionate about reptiles, that breed reptiles, gathering in the central point. Yeah, and it's like yeah, the, it's the just... mecca of reptile trade. Yeah. Um, the fascinating thing is the people just come out in numbers. Yeah. Like the people, we mentioned over 500 vendors. Um, you can just imagine how many people that attract yeah. through the doors. And um, we got there pretty early to set up and you just see hundreds and I can even say thousands of people yeah, standing like a, outside with these polystyrene cooler boxes yeah. just anticipating to get in, yeah. get their reptiles. And um, another point to mention is there is a hell of a lot of trade that happens at the show, yeah. but there's also a lot of pre-sales. So the guys throughout the year trade over social media platforms, email, um, WhatsApp, and they book and pay for their animals. And ham is just the international meeting point for, for all of this. Um, yeah, so there's not a lot of um, sales that are actually done at the expo. A lot of it is pre-booked um, before the expo. But also another thing that's so cool is the different species, because we're quite limited to the species that we can keep in South Africa. And when you hear you just the amount of all those gecko species, like these small, um, uh, unusual gecko species that you but see. But we don't even know species. what they call. Yeah. We don't know where they come from. but you'll be like, you'll walk past the table and the guys have got an adult breeding pair and these geckos are tiny. Yeah. And, and they just they wonder how so they've well. established them yeah. in captivity. And then the other thing that's amazing is that the, um, in, in Europe, over here, you can pretty much get feeder food for anything that you need. And that's one of the uh, reasons why they have success with these rare species. Yeah. They can order feeder geckos. They can order these um, African dwarf uh, mice pinkies or these pygmy mice pinkies to feed the <laughs> We get species. them in our gardens in South Africa yeah. and we haven't been able to establish them. Um, and the reason they're so successful with those smaller species yeah. is just because they get those little pinkies and yeah. little ants and yeah. different species of crickets and beetle. Yeah. It's just really crazy. And the guys have like these naturalistic setups and so say for example if they have a species from um, Australia they all keep that species in that um, environment um, and try and replicate it perfectly. They'll even keep the same plant species that are found in the area where that animal comes from. 
Yeah. And and that's why we always wonder how are these guys breeding these animals that we can't breed or even keep alive in and captivity. That's the solution and to they, it. They yeah. just good yeah. husbandry, yeah. Good food, good yeah. diet. It's crazy. So we've learned a lot here. Um and yeah, the the incredible amount of uh, all the variety of species has been probably one of the most eye-opening thing. Um, even the insects um, and amphibians. We don't get to see yeah, a lot of the amphibians. The amphibians were crazy. Whole They're, tables full of yeah, them. Different species of dart frog uh, from the little rainy tomato, thumbnails. All, all captive bred. Everything yeah. captive bred, yeah. Mind blowing. Very cool. What were some of the highlights for you? It's a tough one. Um, we didn't get much time to walk yeah, around. So we were stuck behind our stand. Um, that's another thing uh, with our South African Expos. We have nice, big, elaborate stands where we have lots of space to move around. It's very comfortable. Here, it's, there's barely any space. You jam behind your stand. You can't really get away from it because it's just people everywhere. You got um, people shouting at you yeah. different languages from pushing yeah. them and nudging them behind yeah. you. The language barrier is quite difficult. Yeah. But um, when I did get a chance to kind of look around, um, I just, I really have a soft spot for colubrids, so different king snake and milk snake mutations. That was a highlight for me, that we, uh, those mutations that we don't get in South Africa. Um, the lizard species, I think, um, was an eye opener. Yeah, they outdo us when it comes to The different to species are Euromastics. Yeah. We, we have maybe one or two species in South Africa and you probably can't even uh, get them. Because um, there's not enough people breeding them, but yeah, there's just abundance. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. so many, and the guys are breeding very successfully. One of and, uh, and the saw... coolest things I saw, um, we have seen them in the past, but they're just mind blowing those Fiji banded iguanas. Yes, yeah. Um, there was a lot of cool venomous stuff. Um, unfortunately, like I mentioned, or like we mentioned earlier, a lot of the trade happens before the show, so you don't get to see the all the cool stuff on the stand, but some of the cool venomous yeah, it's just a hand I saw a lot of species of rattlesnake, yeah. um, a lot of captive bred dwarf bitters, uh, yeah, which originate from southern Africa where we come from. Yeah, it's all captive bred. These guys are breeding dwarf uh, bitters species very successfully, uh, and we struggle um, in South Africa to breed them. It's uh, great to see them established, uh, and mm. they, that will maybe reduce the wild caught numbers. Yeah. Uh, so that was really cool to see. And just the sheer size and volume of the people and uh, the amount of people that are interested in reptiles. In reptiles, yeah. yeah. And it also ignites a bit of a spark for us. I mean, the both of us do this full time. This is our full time job dealing with reptiles. And sometimes you get a little bit despondent and you lose a little bit of interest here and there. But we come to one of these shows and you see all the passion yeah. and everything going on. It just gets us excited to get back home and uh, yeah. put some extra effort into our stuff at yeah. home. So guys, I think that's about it. Uh, once again, we're very sorry we couldn't show you more of that expo. We would have loved to have shown you more, but we also have to respect these expo rules. Um, so I hope you've at least seen enough to, to enjoy this video. And um, yeah, it's been a great trip from us and I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Thanks guys. Cheers. How's it guys? So we did some research and um, just checking on places around our where we're staying in Germany, if there's anything reptile related. And we found out that um, about an hour's drive away from our accommodation is uh, one of the world's largest pet shops. And apparently they got an awesome reptile section. So we thought, uh, let's jump in the car, let's go check it out and hopefully we can see some cool reptiles. Yeah, we both come from a very pet orientated background. Um, we've got common interest in fish and yeah. dogs, cats, animals. Uh, we also look after quite a few pet stores in South Africa. So. Really looking forward to it. Uh, big aquarium sections, the Germans are known yeah. to be really good at that. So yeah, let's go check it out. Yeah, all right, let's go.
All right, guys, so we're back in South Africa. Uh, what an awesome trip that was. To be honest, we're all a little bit tired. Um, those long flights really take it out of you, but we're just happy to be back now, and what a great trip that was. Um, trips like this for us, you know, it's about getting over there. It's about meeting uh, like-minded people, um, just seeing where the industry is in other areas, and just also learning from people that are, are um, successful at the keeping and breeding of reptiles, and meeting them and learning from them, and then taking that advice and um, learning from it, bringing it back here and using it here at Ultimate Exotics to make sure that um, we are always improving, always making sure that um, we're using techniques and practices to make sure that our reptiles are kept in the, in the most ideal environment and that we just are successful at what we do when it comes to the keeping and breeding of reptiles. Um, it, the, it's just really invaluable the amount of stuff that we learn there and um, the, amount of, uh, the people that we meet, they've been doing it for a long time, um, a lot longer than we have been doing it here. So it really is, the what we can learn from them is so great. And uh, that's what we really enjoy is just improving and always growing and just trying to uh, better ourselves here at Ultimate Exotics. So besides the short video of actual the actual expo itself, uh, once again, I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of other cool reptiles to see in the video that I'm sure you guys enjoyed. But uh, besides that, we have a, a really exciting season ahead of us. So there'll be a lot more videos of uh, pairings and um, eggs, eggs and then hopefully um, eggs hatching soon. So some exciting times ahead. But guys, once again, thanks so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment below. And most importantly, please don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Keep well. Cheers.